I'm giving you guys some tips on camping in the winter time, in the cold, in the snow, and this is specifically for folks with a rooftop tent. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's actually climb up in, and I'll give you all these good tips. So a little background, I am a hunter, so I have a lot of experience camping in the cold. As of the last three or four years, I've been sleeping in rooftop tents. So this is the Falcon XL by Roof Nest. I do have a video that I will leave in the description box down below reviewing this particular hard shell rooftop tent but I've had a soft shell rooftop tent before this one. So these tips are going to be geared most specifically towards rooftop tent campers. How do you stay warm when you're out camping in freezing or below freezing conditions? And to me, that starts with your sleeping bag, of course. Insulation for sleeping bags is offered in really two different categories, synthetic or down. Now, synthetic insulation is going to keep you warm even when wet, which can be important when you're camping in the snow, for example, but they're heavier, much heavier, and bulkier, so not as packable as down sleeping bags. Now, down sleeping bags, on the other hand, do a fantastic job of keeping you warm, keeping you insulated, while still being very lightweight and very packable. So when we're talking about camping out of a rooftop tent, that weight and packability is obviously not nearly as important as it is when you're backpacking, for example. But I personally still prefer the down sleeping bags over synthetic. I find that they do a better job of keeping me warm and they're more comfortable overall because they are nice and lightweight. I always choose a down sleeping bag that is at least 20 degrees colder rated 20 degrees colder than the conditions that I'll actually be sleeping in. So for example, if the weather is calling for a 20 degree low overnight, I'm going out with a zero degree sleeping bag. I find the ratings on sleeping bags are always lower than what you'll actually be really comfortable in. So that is definitely important to pay attention to. Another way that you can increase the warmth of your sleeping bag is adding a sleeping bag liner. They're fairly inexpensive and they'll add anywhere from five to 20 degrees of warmth to your bag. During the day, if weather conditions are right, you can actually take that liner out and dry it out during the day because that is another important factor in staying warm, is keeping your sleeping bag dry. If you sleep in wet, sweaty clothes, that condensation can end up building up inside the insulation of your bag and then if conditions are extreme enough, you could end up with a hard, frozen bag. Couple more things on sleeping. Having the properly sized sleeping bag is very, very important in cold temperatures. This is because the warming effect is actually occurring in that little loft space between the insulation itself and you. So if the bag's too small, too tight to your body, it won't do a good job insulating. And if it's too big, there's too much room then it won't do a good job insulating. So my husband, Nick, has tall sleeping bags and there have been times when I've accidentally used them and all of that extra space at the feet end up making me extremely cold at night because that dead space just doesn't do a good job of insulating. So make sure the bag is the right size for you. And my last tip on sleeping, if you are extra cold, you can boil water or warm water, put it in a water bottle, and then throw that in your sleeping bag before you get in. That'll help start that warming process before you even climb in. And then in the morning, if you have that water bottle in your sleeping bag, you'll have filtered water that's ready to drink. Speaking of filters, let's touch on that next. When it comes to water filtration, a lot of your water sources are going to be frozen. But thankfully, if there's snow around, you've got water all around you that you can use. Most people will say boil snow and that totally works. I feel like I can taste the funkiness that comes with just boiling water instead of actually filtering it. So what I like to do is melt the snow in whatever kind of camp stove you have, and then you can run it through your filter. I use little filters by Sawyer. They are so great. I'll leave links in the description box down below. They're affordable, they're cheap, they're easy 
can't say enough good things about him, but that will help take away any funky, <laughs> any funky taste. Next tip, if you have electronics that need batteries, so like your headlamp, for example, make sure to bring lithium batteries instead of alkaline batteries. Lithium will last longer in the cold weather. And even after you pack those lithium batteries, pack extra because again, batteries die in the cold and to make your electronics last even a little bit longer when you're not using your sleeping bag for example wrap them up in your sleeping bag or if you have an extra puffy coat wrap them up in your puffy coat it'll help them last longer in the cold last but not least consider buying an awning of some sort or a tarp of some sort that you can make your own awning because during the winter time when it snows, having an awning to keep that snow off of you while you're preparing dinner, for example, is a nice extra piece of gear to have to make camping in the winter time just that much better. So that is it for this video. Leave a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.